Hi and welcome to the fourth in this series of tutorial videos about using the IFM condition monitoring software VES004 along with the VSE diagnostic modules. In this tutorial we will show you how to change alarm limits within the parameter by analysing the history trends that we can take out from the VSE module, uh, having a look at what history was recorded and uh, making some assessments and decisions on whether we need to change the alarm limits that are set inside the parameter set. So as per the previous tutorials, you can see I've got a connection here to a VSE002 module. You can tell by the little green tick at the side. If I move the mouse along to the history and just click on there, it reads the history and opens it up for me. Now, as per the previous videos, you have the, the tabs here at the left and the right, which um, we'll have a look at shortly. But if I click on the one on the left here, this shows me all the parameters that are within this VSE from each of the sensors. Um, what it's showing me here is whatever was the last thing that was looked at when the history was last opened. If I want to clear this, I can just go to where VSE002 and as per other parts of the software, the, the right click mouse button um, has a lot of functionality. So I just right click and remove all from plot. What that does, it gives me a nice empty history trying to start looking at some data. So if I bring this tab open again, um, we'll pick two or three parameters just to have a look at and see what information was gathered. So if we look at um, sensor 1, 2x to 4x, so this is monitoring primarily for misalignment issues. If I just click beside it there, what that's done, it's given me three um, graphs here. So we have the orange one is the maximum value, the millimetres a second. The blue is the average value and the green is the rotational speed. So you can see it's a fixed speed machine. So the green line here across is just showing that the, the speed didn't change throughout the, the whole period of this history trend. So just to try and keep things nice and neat, if I want to just remove the history, I can either right click where it says it there and remove line, or I can also go to the uh, green rectangle at the top, right click and remove line. And also say I just wanted to look at the, the maximum value, if I just want to remove the average, again right click and remove. So now looking at the history trend that was gathered, this is just from a small fan system I have in the office here. So the, the levels being detected are much lower than you would normally get on normal industrial machinery. Um, so this has given me a trend, this is overnight basically. You can see the millimetres a second levels up the left here. If I want to show where the alarm limits are, if I just uh, left click on the rectangle there, that puts them in. We can see that we've got yellow alarm at three millimetres a second and a red at five millimetres a second. So there was a little bit of change um, at the start of the, the history trend, but that's kind of settled down and you can see for for much of it, it's basically levelled off at one millimetre a second. We have an alarm set at three and five, so I'd be quite happy to keep those alarm limits where they are for that one. So if I just want to remove that, right click, remove all from plot, and we'll maybe look at, uh, say we'll go for the bearing this time. So if I open up the bearing and we'll remove the speed as well, because we're not so much interested in that because it's fixed speed. Um, we'll just maybe look at the average value this time. So if I want to remove the maximum value. Now, because this is on a small fan demo in my office, that the levels here are, are tiny compared to a normal bearing um, in an industrial machine. The If I click on the, the blue rectangle there, it will put in where the yellow and red limits are. And you can see about 250 and about 400 and maybe 50 um, millijs. I'm not sure if you can make it out, but down the bottom here, we actually have the history trend, but it's so low. So if I want to um, to change the scaling, I can click on the, the tab to the right here. And if I then just, where this Y axis is, if I just click on it with the mouse and it makes it a little bit brighter, so we've now highlighted that, I then have the option here where it says auto scaling. So if I click auto scaling to off, and then change the upper scale to say 80. That will now zoom in and show me the trend. I'll maybe just go in um, once more. Maybe take that to, to 20. 
So you can see from the start of the history trend, there's not been a great deal of change. I mean, this is millages, so uh, this isn't real life values you would normally get out in industry, but it's still at a trend nonetheless. And you can see that for most of the time, it settles round about two, um, two millages. And we have alarm limit set at 450 and um, higher than that for the red. So if this was a real machine and those were where the limit levels were, I'd be looking to change those levels. So what I want to do is if I go into the parameter set, let's open up this tab here. If I go into where the, the bearing is, double click on it, and we have the, the limits section. So I can just manually type in, say, um, let's go for seven and 10 millijs we'll go for. So as I've said earlier, this is uh, much lower than you would normally get in the industry, but it gives you an idea of, of what we're, we're doing now. Before I'm going to upload that revised parameter set, I'll go back into the history and just check, say for example, the, um, the, the temperature. Um, so if I just make that bigger there and come here, we'll just remove the bearing and we'll scroll down to look at the temperature. Okay, so that's given us the average and the maximum value. You can see we have the, the two axes. If I click on one of these, it'll bring in where my yellow and red limits are. And you can see it, it did go up very slightly, but stayed below the level um, through the whole history trend. Um, so those are probably okay. I would probably tend to keep that where it is. Um, just to remind you as well, um, you can have the facility to zoom in. So if I just hold the mouse button down, click and drag, you can then zoom in to see a bit more detail than you can. And if you want to um, go back, you just undo zoom by right clicking and click undo zoom. So the only what what I'm looking to change here will be the the bearing levels. So we, we've gone into the parameter set and we've changed those. But the, the thing you need to remember whenever you make any changes is to come up to the top here and write parameters to device. So as soon as we click on that, yes, we do want to continue. What that's now done is change the alarm levels for the bearing to something that's much more suited to the application. Um, so th that's really what you need to be doing if you're looking to change alarm levels as time goes on. Uh, we would recommend that once the initial commissioning of a machine has done, you maybe let it run for a few weeks, a month, and then come back and have a look at the history trends for each of the parameters that have been set, and then make the decisions on where the alarm levels um, should be set going forward. Uh, but normally a month's worth of data is more than sufficient to give you a good idea of how the machine runs under different conditions and then you can set the alarm levels correspondingly. Thank you very much for your time. That concludes the, the fourth in this series of tutorial videos. Um, thank you very much.